All right, so we're going to get into Ethereum again today and take another dive down the rabbit hole and take a look at what's happening at uh, ETH.cc. So you guys are going to like this one. It'll break down some new technology that will have major impacts on Ethereum and a lot of the ecosystem around it. So we'll break all that down for you. My name is Paul Barrow. Welcome back to the Tech Path. If you guys are maybe looking at starting to get into crypto for the first time, one of the things that we always measure here is sentiment. Sentiment data is one of the key things that we look at. So jump over here to the Crypto Power Index. Very easy. Just go over to our website. You can go over there through pbn3.com or Paul Bear Network and get into the Power Index, which drops into a ton of features, including 43 blockchain tokens that we track currently. We also do a full C, uh, CPI dashboard. We also do uh, a technical analysis, a lot of these tokens, and you get uh, multi uh, daily and weekly updates across all of those. Again, measuring sentiment on how markets are moving which can help you guys kind of front run the opportunity. Uh, so take a look at it, and we always leave a link down below if you guys want to jump into it. All right, a couple things here I want to get to. First up is uh, a breaking topic, and that is coming over from, from Fidelity. This is coming from Crypto Intelligence. Fidelity Digital Assets, their Q2 report reveals a very ultra, ultra bullish outlook for ETH in general. A couple of things here. Uh, this, of course, is their signals report. This was July 18th, expressing a positive outlook for ETH in both short and long term. First report highlights network uh, higher burn rate compared to coin issuance, which has resulted in a net supply decrease. We talk about the deflation of Ethereum all the time here. And if you're not looking at, say, ultrasound money, which is a good place to kind of look at some of the data, uh, that's a good way to start to understand just how valuable ETH can be. Additionally, increasing the number of Ethereum addresses uh, transacting for the first time, indicating very healthy network adoption. So good stuff. And all this, I think, supports the narrative out of ETH.cc in where ETH is going as a whole, but a lot of the projects that are starting to fly into Ethereum and around it. So definitely happening uh, over there in Paris right now, Ethereum Community Conference 6. 280 plus speakers over there at this event. And we've broken down a handful of the presentations. There's so many presentations. I think it would take weeks to watch them all. So what we've done, the Crypto Pit, has dove into a lot of these, give you guys some clips, give you a framework of kind of how things are starting to lay up in the Ethereum ecosystem and some of the big advancements that have taken place. One of the things I want to hit on right here. All right, so I just want to show... Vitalik was up there, of course, doing his presentation, just jumps right off the stage and walks out. But the point he was getting at is really the interoperability and the ability to onboard in a much easier fashion. And a lot of the ideas that he's starting to present is just to make onboarding so easy that we can see mass adoption. And that's going to come from something other than just connecting your wallet. This could be two-factor authentication, you know, face ID, all sorts of things that would eventually be rolled into where these platforms are going. And I think that's the thing that really is important on how most of this is going to be going. All right, so what I want to jump into is Remark, who's really rolling out a, a whole layer of new interfaces to really kind of change the framework of how NFTs are going to be done. One of them is going to be around multi-asset NFTs. Let me kind of show you a little bit from their website on multi-asset. This is ERC5773. Mixed media NFTs, revealable ticketing systems, cross game skins, and so on, including metadata uh, backup. Let me go to a clip real quick just to show you a little bit more about this. Let's go to that one. To backtrack a little bit, an NFT 1.0 is just a you know, static piece of media, usually. It's usually hosting metadata on a centralized server, which is then rugged and replaced with something else, and that's dynamic. Or it has an admin key in the smart contract, which again, the issuer can used to, to upload something new. For almost all people, this is fine. But we can do better. And NFTs 2.0, in this case, can actually upgrade NFTs 1.0. We've made, we made this upgrader tool that you can use to upgrade any NFT collection into 2.0. Well, there are five main ERCs I want to talk about today. The first one is a multi-asset uh, NFT standard. This solves the age-old problem of gamers hating NFTs because you can't take a skin from Fortnite into I don't know, Borderlands, whatever. Um, now you can. Because you have multi-asset NFTs, they don't have to be different. 
they can also be the same asset, but on different locations. So you can have one asset that points to the model of the lobster on a centralized server, one asset that points to it on IPFS, one asset that points to it on Rweave, and so on. And so the chances of all of these asset endpoints going down are exponentially lower than having it in one single location. And so the avatar is actually an NFT that can have pockets or whatever, but the avatar can also contain a non-transferable NFT that's a brain. The brain itself can have skill slots in it, and the skills you collect in the game can also be non-transferable NFTs. If you want to build a fully on-chain, finally a true Web3 game, now this is very possible, very easy to do with this stuff. Of course, it's applicable to many more media types. Like you can have a collaborative music composition where a music sheet is completely empty but has slots for vocals, bass guitar, lead guitar, drums, whatever. It's traded and distributes royalties to everybody who contributed based on their tracks in this NFT. If I'm the owner of an NFT, the minter of the collection cannot just replace my art, but he can propose it and I have to accept it. The owner of a multi-asset NFT can always pick the priority asset to show in marketplaces so that if you want to sell it on a legacy marketplace like OpenSea, you can select which one has the priority. All right, so you can see that's a really big advancement on how NFTs will be utilized, but maybe even more so on the strategies that will play into this, not only in the gaming, but also in the entertainment field, maybe even in, in different applications within business. So. Quite a bit there. All right, so let's jump to an example of multi-asset NFTs. Here's Singular kind of showing a little bit about how you could do this. If you click into the different variations of the assets, you can kind of see the different models that can be used, all this being one NFT. All right, so let's go into the second proposal, which is nestable and equipable NFTs. Listen in. So 6059 allows you to put NFTs inside of other NFTs. 6220 allows you to define slots with which some of these assets are compatible. So the lobster can have a head slot which can equip one of these hats. Now, what happens if our primary asset is the voxelated lobster? The art style of the hat doesn't really match it anymore. Since every NFT based on these standards is actually following the same rules, this means that these hat NFTs are also multi-asset NFTs, which means that the hat can have an alternative asset for itself, which is a, itself a voxelated version. What happens if a new collection comes out that is completely unrelated, a stained glass window collection, and that one really can't wear hats, right? Again, we add a new asset to the hat, a stained glass version of the hat. So we'll tell the stained glass version of the hat asset, you are compatible with this slot in, the, in this collection. And so now you actually can put the hat into this slot. So what did you achieve by this? Today, when you launch an NFT collection, you are attacking other collections, collectors, traders, users, because you want them. So by definition, you want their attention, you want to take them from the other collections. Here, no. Here, everybody grows together. The more stuff is launched, the more it's compatible with everything else. And when I see a cool stained glass hat, I will ask this person, where did you get it? And they will tell me. All right, so again, more use cases for NFTs itself. Uh, if you look at Singular, you can kind of see a little bit about where this is going. The equipable and also nestable inside an NFT. So I know this gets into a lot of detail around what this might mean. Use case is going to be very creative uh, around how companies are using this, but also maybe on strategies of how creators actually build NFTs in the future. So a lot of that, I think, is going to change the framework of where Web3 will go, obviously we'll see this in gaming first. I want to go over to our next one, which is the soulbound reputation NFTs. Listen in. And so this extends into the 6454 ERC. Essentially, you can lock an NFT inside another NFT, but the parent can still be transferable. And this is especially useful for reputation. Let's say I did some tasks. I got three reputations and two equipables. Now I can equip these hats onto my lobster and show off that I've done this task. But also I have this reputation in my lobster that I can never take away. Now the other guy comes in with his stained glass avatar and he does another set of tasks. Really cool thing about this is nobody in this entire system has to know each other. They're all strangers. They never collaborated. This is all mutually compatible, which leads to the ability to trade between completely unrelated collections. Again, growing the pie for everybody. So you can have categories of work you did for a project and your reputation can grow in that category. Therefore, your vote in that category will be stronger. Matters of 
uh, governance that require dev voting power will be skewed towards Bob because he has more experience in it and his vote will be more powerful. All right, so there, again, more explanation on what this simply means is you're going to have elements in there that will be linked forever to a particular NFT. Again, this could play into other use cases. The example right here on Singular is, you know, kind of the aspect of this NFT, which also has this one right here, Snake Soldier's Element Gem. Um, but again, this will be something that I think will start to change some of the strategies of how NFTs are actually done. Again, from the creator side of things. So let's take a look at this next proposal. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at when this is going to launch. Let's listen in. It's coming. It's on the way. We've just launched on Ethereum last night or the night before. So it's still kind of experimental. We've been on Moonbeam up until now, and Polygon is coming next week, and other EVMs very, very soon. Whatever you launch on it will be visible on legacy marketplaces. So OpenSea will be able to show this and other marketplaces will be able to show this. We opted not to take the iframe route on purpose, which many projects do, where when they launch on OpenSea and so on, they will usually embed an iframe um, to load their asset. And this makes them look dynamic. But the iframe is hosted on a centralized server. Nothing about this is centralized. Anybody can take this and run with it. Anybody can build on top of it, and it's fully decentralized. This NFT 2.0 functionality has never been really hard to build, but it's hard to build it in a way that it's forever backwards and forwards compatible. All right, so as you can see here, available now on Ethereum, Moonbeam, Polygon coming soon, uh, ZK Sync, and even Arbitrum. So this is going to roll out pretty quickly. I think, and again, just more advancements on the power of Ethereum in general, which only builds to the ecosystem, starts to add a lot to it. Uh, last up, this just kind of shows you some of the emotes that are involved within this, and it kind of shows you some of the aspects. Here's the multi-asset NFTs, nestable, composables, uh, and then, of course, soulbounds and emotable NFTs right there, which is also coming soon uh, on ERC6381. All right, so let's take a look at emotes. Let's listen to this clip. On-chain reactions, like you would expect when opening an emoji keyboard, can be sent to any NFT. The audience of your NFT will thus be able to interact with your NFT. The more interactions you can generate, the more attention you will be drawing to your NFT. Holders can see what wallets interact with their NFT and when. Getting large or famous wallets to send an emoji to your NFT, like Jay-Z, Kanye, or Tom Hardy, could drastically enhance the NFT ownership experience. This has the possibility to add more value and notoriety to your NFTs. Background of your NFT could change to a night background if enough moon emojis are sent to it. Again, the marketing and community engagement applications here for NFTs are endless. So as you can see, lots of new uh, proposals, a lot of new technology kind of rolling into the ETH ecosystem. If all of this gets to the level that I think it will get, good for ETH. Uh, the key here obviously is being able to roll this out, get full mass adoption, and also get creators using it in a full line use case, because I think that's the other factor that's going to play into this. Until people really understand it and see it being used out there in the wild, uh, it's really just technology that essentially is going to eventually you know, kind of fuel this uh, development opportunity. All right, so additionally, just more news. This, of course, is unstoppable. Most important aspect of Web3 domains is ownership. Totally agree with that. One of the things they've done is their, you know, this ability now to where you can manage your, your .eth ENS. So now they've got it to where you can actually do auto renewal, which is a good thing, good feature there. The big thing here, of course, is some big news coming in from Unstoppable Sandy Carter talking a chance to win some credit soared towards Unstoppable Domain. But again, big news coming out. Love to hear and see what that's going to actually be. The two announcements, the marketplace announcement, people are loving because they're looking for utility for their domain. This enables them to go out there and find all the great things that are happening in the space. And then secondly, of course, the announcement of Don E, uh, making the Web3 community much more inclusive. So more later, I'll write some in my blog. I'm just so busy right now, I haven't had time, but I wanted to make sure I gave you guys a quick update. All right, so we've had Talk McFarland on our show before, kind of breaking down. Here's some examples of potentials of what this might look like. I want to jump to a couple of clips from him. Um, let's go to our first clip from McFarland.
so it's a good sneak peek, but I think you guys get the picture. It's Batman and Superman being launched on kind of the aspect of this new version too of how NFTs will be traded and used and also collected when you think about digital collectibles in general. This may be the one NFT digital collectible that I would hold. And when I look at other platforms out there, some of those have, you know, struggled. This one, of course, could be a big winner. So I'm, I'm very excited about seeing this. We'll see how it plays out. And of course, all of what we've seen here from these proposals will play into these future NFTs and how they're used, how they're deployed, all the creativity around them. Let me go over to this last clip from McFarland as well. Listen in. All right, so McFarland being one of the few projects out there that I feel like are doing it right. And interoperability is obviously the, one of the key cornerstones of making Web3 work, especially in digital assets. And I think this will be one of the, maybe the um, innovators that really kind of take it to the next level. And if you think about all, all this new tech that's coming out of each CC, these are some of the creators that could implement that into real world applications. So watch for all of that. We're going to try to get McFarland on the show again to talk a little bit more about their roadmap, their strategy, maybe how some of this new technology and a lot of these advancements will be able to help them going forward. Remember, Polygon is really the one that is going to benefit from this as well, because if you think about what happens and what is happening with Polygon right now, they've launched their Polygon 2.0 roadmap. Again, all of that, remember, coming soon on Polygon. This will be one of the other chains out there that will take big benefits to. So obviously that tied to ETH in a big way. So if you're looking at, hey, how do I front run this? If I'm looking at long-term strategies around NFTs, digital collectibles, what would be some of the, the projects that I would be most interested in? Obviously, you could look at everything from Render to obviously Ethereum going into Polygon if you want to look at the Layer 2s but really understanding some of these technologies. So it's much like what happens in the securities business when you look at how Apple is deploying with certain kinds of technology, what happened with Unity, how Meta is deploying. All of that also applies to what's happening over here into Web3 and the blockchain world. These technologies will affect these tokens. These tokens will affect projects and creators, and all of that just makes the ecosystem flourish. All right, so if you guys are listening in over on the podcast right now, I would suggest you must come over to the YouTube channel to really kind of get a full understanding of this just from the visuals from these clips. And also, it's a great place for you to join our Diamond Circle. We always leave a link down and below. Uh, it's a great opportunity for you guys to get additional research, more content from us. We do our podcast over there every week uh, for our Diamond Circle members only. So make sure and just hit the link down below. If you want to catch me, it's out there on Twitter, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.